Well guys, the summer is officially over, September is here, and movie season sucks for a while, so I decided let's talk about some things that you guys have been asking me to talk about for a long time. These are my picks for the top 10 best comic book films of all time, as of 2014, September, because next year some stuff might go down, I don't know what's gonna happen. And what better shirt to wear than this? I mean, look at this thing. This shirt is absurdly amazing. It's... I... I want to touch it. Now, my good buddy on YouTube, The Flick Pick, or John Flickinger, recently published his top 10 worst comic book movies of all time. And you know what he told me? He said if I didn't mention him at the beginning of this video, he was going to put me in a headlock and punch me like the dweeb that I am. But seriously, I'm not going to do a top 10 worst for a while in regards to comic book films. So if you guys want to know some cool opinions about that, go check out his video on his channel because they're very similar to mine in regards to what I would pick as well. But enough chit chat. Let's get started with number 10. Superman the movie came out in 1978 and it launched the modern superhero genre. For a while it was just Superman movies and they didn't really know what to do. It wasn't until 1989 where they decided to go forth with Batman and Tim Burton did a pretty good job with that as well. But Superman the movie was one of the first times that superheroes were ever taken seriously on film. Christopher Reeve to this day is Superman. I mean, the guy just owned the role and he was fantastic as Clark Kent as well. My dad told me about the first time he saw this movie in theaters and he said that everyone was just in awe, not just at the special effects, but the fact that they were actually not laughing because up until that time, superhero films were more comedy oriented. The first appearance from a film that came out this year on this list is X-Men Days of Future Past. I'm a huge X-Men fan. I've loved almost all of the X-Men movies. Some of them aren't too good. X-Men 3, X-Men Origin. <laughs> but X-Men Days of Future Past was Brian Singer's triumphant return to the franchise in which he was able to take the characters from X-Men First Class and from his original X-Men series, combine them, and make something way more epic than most people were expecting. My pick for number eight is a relatively unknown film that I think needs to be way more known than it is, and that is Batman Mask of the Phantasm. I appreciated the first two Batman films. I like Batman. I like Batman Returns. But Batman Mask of the Phantasm was my favorite Batman movie for quite some time. It was based off the original animated series, which I also loved from the early 90s, and it was a deep, dark gritty animated tale that explored Batman's roots like none of the feature films prior had. My pick for number seven is a comeback role for the one and only Robert Downey Jr. He was already pretty famous in the 90s, went through a lot of problems, and then all of a sudden he was just, there was nothing. I mean, he was gone. He was, pfft. who would have thought that this guy, after going through everything he went through, which is, would play the perfect Iron Man Tony Stark combination. He did such a fantastic job in this role that I honestly cannot picture another person playing that role and he is still playing that role to this day because no one else wants him to change. John Favreau did a fantastic job directing that movie. The action sequences looked amazing, the story was good, the characterizations were awesome, everything about Iron Man worked. There's been a lot of Spider-Man movies so far. The last two, <laughs> hmm. Yeah, hmm. Spider-Man, when I grew up, was actually my favorite superhero. I loved everything Spider-Man. And that is why Spider-Man 2, to this day, is still my favorite Spider-Man film. This film understood the character of Spider-Man so well, and it also was able to tell a really good dramatic story while maintaining the fun and cheesy origins of Spider-Man's comics. Because if you go back and read some of the Spider-Man comics from the 60s, which is what Sam Raimi was trying to tribute a lot with his original films, you're going to see a lot of corn, you're going to see a lot of cheese, and they understood that with these films, but they were also able to make them more gritty. That train sequence, has anyone complained about that train sequence? You can complain about Tobey Maguire's poop face, but it's still amazing. I love that train sequence. It's one of my favorite action scenes in a superhero film to this day, and it still holds up 10 years later. My goodness, this film's 10 years old. Ooh. My pick for number five is yet another film from this year, Captain America, The Winter Soldier. Another example of a sequel that was better than the first one, that understood what the character was, but made it a lot better than what they already tried to do. See, the best part about a superhero sequel is that now you've got the origin story out of the way. You don't have to deal with all that stuff anymore. Now you can just show this guy in his prime doing what he does best. And Captain America, The Winter Soldier understood that 
immensely. This was a fantastic spy action thriller. It had amazing action sequences done by two directors who are primarily known for comedy. Chris Evans owned as Captain America in this movie. If there was ever any doubt about him playing that character, I'm pretty sure they pretty much eliminated that already. But if there was ever that one guy who was like, I need a badass Captain America, where is he? This film gave us that. Guardians of the Galaxy. How can you not like this movie? It understood its characters so well. It had an amazing soundtrack, fantastic special effects, well-directed action. It was very hilarious, well-written. It was a really hard movie to get right, too, because it's not a Captain America movie. It's not a Spider-Man movie. Hulk doesn't show up at any time during this movie, nor does Iron Man. So you have a whole bunch of characters that no one really knew that much about, except for the hardcore fans of the source material. And yet it has become not only the highest grossing comic book film of the year, it has become the highest grossing film of the year as of right now. Marvel spent so many years leading up to The Avengers, and it paid off big time because they got a director and a writer like Joss Whedon who understands not only how to tell a very cool story and make it fun and interesting to watch, but he had great dialogue for these characters that he also understood very well. And that dialogue was so important because it's the first time we get to see these characters sitting in a room together doing stuff and fighting bad guys together. So yes, that's cool to see, but what are they going to talk about? Joss Whedon understood that getting that dialogue right between the characters, getting it fun, witty, adventurous, and interesting, and smart, getting that right was one of the reasons the Avengers worked so well. And of course, you get to see Hulk smash a whole bunch of stuff. At number two, I'm gonna break the rules a little bit because this is a film that is not based off of any comic book that's out there. This is a film that is all about comic books though and features a central protagonist that has yet to discover he's a superhero. Unbreakable is one of my all-time favorite movies. I find it very underrated. I think that it is M. Night Shyamalan's second best film, my favorite of his being Signs. Willis's character has never been harmed in his life. He survives a horrific train accident, and Samuel L. Jackson is convinced this guy is a superhero, and he spends the entire film trying to convince him that he is one. Unbreakable, I think, is one of the best superhero movies that no one ever calls a superhero movie. If you haven't seen Unbreakable, check it out, because I really think it's worth your time. My number one pick is a little bit complicated. I didn't want to have these movies all spread throughout this list at various parts. So I'm going to cheat again and say that my number one pick for the best comic book film ever made is The Dark Knight Trilogy. Christopher Nolan's trilogy for Batman is, in my opinion, the best incarnation of a superhero we have ever seen on screen. With that first film, Batman Begins, he just nailed the origin story finally in live action. Batman Mask of the Phantasm had a fantastic origin story in animation, but never had we seen it in live action because Tim Burton's original film, while good, he was Batman from the beginning. We never got to see that training. And training him with Ra's al Ghul and all of that stuff with his parents made for such a big emotional payoff as you progress with Batman throughout this movie. Do I even need to express why The Dark Knight is a good movie? Not only is Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker iconic at this point, scary and real, and also darkly funny, but the entire film as an action thriller was lifted far above its predecessor. And I for one love The Dark Knight Rises. It was great to see a villain, Bane, played by Tom Hardy, who is physically superior to Batman, because up until then, no one actually challenged Batman physically. To see Batman in fear was something that we hadn't seen before, and that really added to the dramatic depth of this movie. And of course, of course, the last hour of this film is some of the most breathtaking filmmaking I've seen ever. So guys, those are my picks for the top 10 best comic book films of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed this list. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun talking about these things. Comic book movies are kind of important to me. I grew up on them. They're nostalgic for me. And when they're treated with respect, there's something in me that just goes, thank you. Thank you. You understand. Also, recently I shared an image on my Twitter about something that I've recently acquired and a lot of people were like salivating over it and were like, dude, where'd you get that? I need to know where you got that right now because I need my hands on that. I got this incredible Breaking Bad wood carving and I'm in love with it. I touch it a lot. I got this from SpaceWolfLimited.com. These guys are incredibly awesome. In fact, these guys contacted me and wanted to sponsor some of my videos and I was like, you've gotta be kidding me. You guys do some of the coolest stuff on the internet. These guys are independent artists. There are only 50 of all of their designs that are made and then they are gone forever. They plant a tree for each item sold. How incredible is that? And through me, you can use the coupon code STUCKMAN. <laughs> my last name. 
I'm gonna cry. And you get 25% off your order. So that is so awesome. Definitely go to spacewolflimited.com. These guys are super nice. They have amazing products and let them know that I sent you and use the coupon code Stuckman. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching this video. I look forward to doing more top tens. Maybe something for Halloween. <laughs> see. As always, guys, thank you so much. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck manized.